Hollywood is notorious for its whirlwind romances, and Katy Perry and Russell Brand were one of them. You know, the kind of romance where they date for five minutes and then get married for three seconds and then get a divorce. Okay, it wasn't really that quick, but still. It all happened very fast, and it didn't last very long. Looking back, what was the best thing and the worst thing about being married to Katy Perry? The best thing is like she's really exciting and brilliant and good fun. And the worst thing, I suppose, is things like that don't last forever. What makes this one interesting is the fact that Russell ended things with Katie via text message. Don't forget to subscribe to Rumor Juice, where we have all the juiciest scoops on all your favorite celebrity couples. Following the release of the Netflix concert movie, Pardon Me, which was only released after the divorce announcement, fans got to see what was really happening behind the scenes of their marriage, and it was clear that things were truly a lot more difficult than the couple had let on. Being in love is the dream, and then the reality of making it work with the marriage is not like the movies. There's a lot more compromise, a lot more sacrifice, you know, or else it just won't work. The singer's relentless schedule included 124 shows. The tour cycle saw around 10 shows take place almost back to back before she was allowed to take just a few days off. Those few days off, she dedicated to spending solely with Russell. In order to see him, Katie was constantly flying back and forth. However, her husband rarely joined her on the actual tour and met her in the cities where she was performing. Just as they're often slow to reveal themselves in real life, the cracks in Katie and Russell's relationship gradually became wider and unavoidable on screen. Russell's appearance in the documentary are fleeting at best, and his absence speaks volumes. Visibly frustrated and exhausted, Katie attempted to balance the biggest tour of her life while single-handedly trying to save her marriage. When it all fell apart, her heartbreak was laid bare. However, things weren't always so tough for the couple. After a chance meeting at the 2008 MTV Video Music Awards, Perry and Brand were brought together by Brandon Jonah Hill's 2010 film, Get Him to the Greek. The singer had a small cameo moment in the film where she had a steamy makeout session with Russell. However, the scene was deleted from the film. And he kissed her actually on the set of the movie. And they said, they both said the sparks just flew. She said that her heart stopped and she thought, oh my God, he is actually the one. Later that year, following Perry's performance of I Kissed a Girl at the BMAs, Brand joked, I was so inspired by Katy Perry's song message that I'm currently going through nine chopsticks a day and my penis has never felt more moisturized. Yeah, Russell, we're not sure that's what chapstick is supposed to be used for. However, while he was inspired by Katy's song, there was a little problem. Perry wasn't single. She was still dating gym class hero's frontman, Travi McCoy, but the tables turned in favor of Russell just a year later. At the 2009 VMAs, Katie was now a single woman, having split from McCoy, and Brand saw this as an opportunity to take a chance on the singer. They flirted their way through rehearsals for the show, and rumors that they were an item started buzzing soon after. Things were reported to be very hot and heavy between the two. However, they avoided the spotlight for the first few weeks of their relationship. That was until they made their debut as a couple at a Fendi party at Paris Fashion Week. Once the cat was out of the bag, the couple had no plan of slowing things down. It was only three months into their relationship that Russell decided to propose to Katie. This happened on New Year's Eve in 2009 outside the Taj Mahal while the couple was on holiday in India. Ironically enough, he would later text her that he wanted a divorce two years later to the day. Ouch. Before we skip ahead of the story, the couple said I do in India in a private ceremony less than a year later. I was very careful every step of the way. Uh, it's why we didn't uh, sell our wedding photos. Um, and it's why, you know, we're both trying to keep it between each other. A reported 21 camels, elephants, horses, traditional dancers, and musicians formed part of Brand's wedding procession. Sounds fancy? Just wait until you hear about the wedding gifts. The BBC reported that rapper P. Diddy also performed at the wedding ceremony, and Russell gifted Perry one of the sanctuary's rare female tigers. We don't know about you, but maybe a kitten would have been less maintenance than a full-grown tiger? Despite their luxurious, extravagant, and exotic wedding, things began to crumble just as quickly as they heated up. It seems like it was the pressure of their demanding schedules and Brand's loathing of life in the public eye that resulted in the dwindling of their relationship. Talking to Rolling Stone while promoting her multi-platinum hit machine record, Teenage Dream, 
Harry admitted her religious upbringing sometimes caused conflicts between herself and Brand. I am sensitive to Russell taking the Lord's name in vain and to Lady Gaga putting a rosary in her mouth, she told the mag. I think when you put sex and spirituality in the same bottle and shake it up, bad things happen. However, despite their differences in faith, the couple continued to reassure the public that everything was completely hunky-dory. During a co-hosting stint on Live with Regis and Kelly, Brand shared he and his wife were happier than ever, despite all ongoing split rumors, but confessed that the constant attention from the paparazzi and the media did put stress on their relationship. Now, like, obviously the marriage didn't last for a very long time, and I, but, and, uh, and I think that is to do with the sort of undulating nature of fame. Appearing on the Ellen DeGeneres show to doubt the end of her successful California Dreams tour, Perry told DeGeneres she wanted kids with Russell. I would love to have children. I think that's one of the reasons you get married, and especially to the person that you marry. You think, hmm, that person is going to be a good partner, a good parent. However, she also admitted that she didn't think it was the right time for kids. During the sit-down, she admitted that she and Brand worked hard to see each other while she was on tour, but that it was often a challenge. Before any of us knew what was really going on behind the scenes, at the American Music Awards, Katie was forced to respond to tabloids claiming she was sporting a small baby bump under her pink dress, telling Holly Scoop, hell no, when asked if children were in her near future. Just days after the pregnancy rumors started to die down, new allegations of the couple's split started to surface, forcing Perry to take to Twitter to deny the divorce rumblings. First I'm pregnant and then I'm divorced. What am I, all my children? Then, it was Russell's turn to address the rumors when he visited Ellen a little later. He also denied any rumors of a breakup, stating, I've treated the whole internet now like it's a wicked little liar. Yeah, I'm really happily married. I'm married to Katie. Perpetually, until death do us part was the pledge. However, just a few months after that interview, Katie was spotted splashing around in the ocean in Hawaii without Russell and not wearing her wedding ring. Just days later, Bran's ring finger was bare when photographers caught him out walking in London. So, until death do they part? Fans didn't think so. It was clear that whatever was going on was a lot messier than the couple wanted to let on. At the end of 2011, Brand filed for divorce from Perry, citing irreconcilable differences. No separation date was given and representatives for Brand and Perry weren't talking. It was alleged that the comedian had sent Katie a text message as a heads up, letting her know that he would be filing for divorce. Shortly after their divorce, Russell appeared on The Howard Stern Show and talked about his marriage. We did work it out. She's happy. I'm happy. I was really, really in love with her, but it was difficult to see each other. It mostly didn't work for practical reasons. Of course, I still feel uh, great feelings of compassion and warmth for Katie, uh, but like I'm, I'm, very, I'm very happy with my life. Speaking to Vogue in 2013, Katie was very careful about what she said when it came to her failed marriage. She also never referred to her ex-husband by her name, only as a magical man. However, she did confess that there were several issues in the relationship, one of them being that Russell didn't see her as his equal. At first when I met him, he wanted an equal, and I think a lot of times strong men do want an equal, but then they get that equal and they're like, I can't handle the equalness, she confessed. He didn't like the atmosphere of me being the boss on tour, so that was really hurtful, and it was very controlling, which was upsetting. I felt a lot of responsibility for an ending, but then I found out the real truth, which I can't necessarily disclose because I keep it locked in my safe for a rainy day. I let go and I was like, this isn't because of me, this is beyond me. So I've moved on from that. It's like a scar. Sometimes you look on your legs or your arms and you see this scar and it reminds you of the thing that you learned or what not to do again. Jokes and Brand's comedy routines were also made at Katie's expense, and when asked what she thought of his performance, the singer shared, Hysterical in some ways. Until he started making jokes about me and he didn't know I was in the audience because I had come to surprise him at one of his shows. So, hysterical to a point. In the same 2013 Vogue interview, she confirmed she hadn't heard from Brand in one and a half years since their divorce. Let's just say I haven't heard from him since he texted me saying he was divorcing me. December 31st, 2011. In his 2015 documentary, Brand, A Second Coming, Brand is seen as extremely critical of Perry's fame and media attention. Oh my f***ing god, I'm living this life of the very thing I detest. Vapid, vacuous celebrity. Fame and power is bullshit, he said.
being I think it was a completely normal situation, yeah. honestly. I swear to God, there's no mystery. And, like, mm-hmm. and, I, and I don't think that we should be continuing to propagate the idea that famous people are magical and special because it makes people feel that their lives ain't no good. Mm-hmm. However, by 2017, it seemed that he was singing a different tune about his ex-wife. I still feel very warm towards her. I feel like when I hear about her or see her, ah, there's that person. There's that person in the world. He also stuck to the story of fame and scheduling being the reason that things didn't work out. Whatever the reasons were, the split was messy and left both Katie and Russell pretty heartbroken. However, Katie has moved on and she's living her happily ever after with Orlando Bloom and their new bouncing baby girl, Daisy Dove Bloom.